much indeed, shockingly. Well, um, don't worry if the, you think we've forgotten about Jean Dujardin. Really very, very powerful So do you think, do you think Karen, that the, the effects did take over from the content in Hugo? Oh, I saw it in 2D and 3D, and I thought it was amazing in 3D, and I loved the use of the 3D, because we've seen it squandered a lot, this technique. Yeah. In 2D, yeah, I would tend to agree with you, but I, I, think, I think that there were some wonderful tracking shots that I oh, found fantastic. thrilling in the beginning. It felt to me a bit like, uh, you know, with Spielberg, when you can smell that he's just after an award, and I hate that, you know, you know when some guys hit a certain age, they just want to start winning awards, they want that respectability from the, you know, the, their peers to like them. Mm -hmm. And I love, that's what I love about Hitchcock, like he made Frenzy before he died and it was a dirty raw film a 25 year old could have made. Yeah. Like I feel these guys are just getting a wee bit older and that's what I loved about The Departed, that it was like the old Scorsese, he was doing uh -huh. something a wee bit daring, but that's, I couldn't even watch War Horse for that reason too, you know, the, I just, it just felt like you a mean, guy mean, who was, uh, he was uh, playing uh, to the gallery, you, you mean, it was for mean, the Academy, you know. You mean Hugo? No, no, I'm just meaning for Spielberg as well. Oh, both Hugo and Warhorse, for, for both of them felt like the same problem for me, which was, you know, guys who were looking for respectability instead of looking to do something different. So they, do you think that's what they've really gone for? I think they both suffer from the same problem, yeah. And what did you think, Natalie? Uh, I think it's worth bringing Briefly, just, just Alexander Payne for Departed. Um, for uh, descendants, 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 yes, sorry, yes. descendants. Oops, oops, <laughs> Freudian slip. Uh, it, it's, it's, it's an interesting film. I don't think it's his strongest work. I have to say. Um, I, as I said, I didn't like it the first time. I liked it more the second time, but, you know, I still can't get sideways out of my mind. Okay, well, we've heard who our panelists would pick for the three main personal prizes, but what about the big one, Best Picture? It's a controversial lineup this year with some noticeable absences and some questionable appearances. Until last year, only five films made it to Best Picture nominee. Now, in the second year of having ten, there's a much wider range of work from across the genres. Everything from a 3D children's story to a silent movie. Oscar. Oh, I have you all I want. A bankable star really does any harm, and a Hawaiian drama, The Descendants, also boasts other essential winning ingredients. Dysfunctional family relationships, an admired director, and strong child performances. But then maybe this is the year for something different. Moneyball, scripted by Aaron Sorkin, is a clever, witty approach to the perennial film topic of baseball. Yes, Gil. Gil Pender. Gil Pender. Hemingway. Hemingway? You like my book? Liked? I loved all, all your work. Nostalgia is certainly a theme of the nominees. Hugo is a peon to the birth of film in France, following the Parisian adventures of a young boy living in a station in the 20s. And reversing the compliment, the artist pays homage to American silent film in early Hollywood. It's been a runaway success at every award ceremony of the season and hotly tipped to take the top goal. So will and should the Academy play it safe this year with all the standard best picture tropes or will it uncharacteristically take a more radical option? So what finally we do come on to talk about um, the artist. I mean this is a pretty brave thing to do isn't it? You know black and white silent film. Yeah I got a great phone call from my brother. He phoned me up and he said I've got a pirate copy, it's the worst I've ever had. He said it's in black and white, there's no sound, it's called The Artist. I think he was kidding me <laughs> on. <laughs> but I'm waiting for the 3D colour version, you know. But, like, but no, I, I, re I was surprised how much I enjoyed it, because I thought it might be fun for a short movie or something. I didn't know if they could sustain it, but they really did. And I watched it at home on a screener as well, which a lot of people said isn't the best way to watch it. But it's really, it's charming. And like I say, you know, in, in bad times, it's lovely to retreat like Downton Abbey and upstairs, downstairs. It's nice to go back to the past sometimes. Natalie. Oh, I love this. I know there's kind of sort of background against it so I'm very lucky because I saw it last year um, for reviewing purposes um, I think it's just they are the most likable film couple in such a long time he has a face you just want to see crack into a smile <laughs> and she is beautiful um, there is singing there is dancing Whoa. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Harvey Weinstein thinks this seems to think there is uh, <laughs> yes um, I, I it's entertaining if, the, if there is any depth it's the fact that that perhaps we want something that's wholesome entertainment and, and we like to see a nice fuzzy actor who worked for sausages um, no, I mean, I, I can't say does not work. <laughs> Wait a That's second. That's not what I heard. <laughs> um, but, uh, no, I, I wouldn't say there's we any We all depth. work for sausages. Oh, <laughs> metaphorical. Well, um, <laughs> but I, I don't think you expect depth from a, from a film like this. Um, there are other films that, that will do it. This is 
wholesome and it, it's it's nice a huge demographic and also this film has been promoted for a long long time I saw the trailer for it over a year ago in a very small town in Illinois where it wasn't even screened <laughs> but uh, it's it's got a long tail of marketing to push it so is wholesome enough I think it's more than that I, I, I think it's an astonishing achievement you know, to make a f silent film in this day and age, I think the bravery of that, the courage of it, is astounding. If you had said the script, would you have said, oh, oh blimey, what's yeah, this about? I would have, yeah, I would have given it certainly a lot of consent. Yeah. I would have thought it was an art house movie. Mm -hmm. I would yeah. have thought, well, this is an art house movie. Mm -hmm. Somebody's got this idea to do a silent film. And everybody, um, we've all taken that a little bit too much for granted. Mm -hmm. I think it's a remarkably good film. And I think it's also a film that says a lot about film. It says a lot about the state of film. It also says about the kind of film we've come to. And it reminds us of something that was really rather special about film. You know, there's, there's, there's so, I mean, he's so right on of Gene Kelly. I kind of keep thinking about Singing in the Rain. I keep thinking of the films I loved as a child. And it's got all of that. And the dog and the, and the girl and the story and the, and, and, the st and the fall from grace and the recovery. I think it's a wonderful film. Well, isn't there a theory that a really good film you should be able to watch with the sound off anyway? Yeah. Storytelling. Yeah. You can certainly do that with this one. <laughs> Is that something that perhaps we should have done with War Horse? Oh, yeah. Yeah, or just fast forwarded through quite a lot of it. Because here's the thing. The narrator of the book is the horse, and that is fine. Um, <laughs> however, <laughs> on the screen, you lose that. I don't know why, because he's psychic. He can understand everything everyone says to him. He can talk to other horses. So why he can't chat, I do not know. He could simply go to Mr. <laughs> Edroot. <but laughs> <laughs> Mr. Ed, the talking horse. Mr. Ed, the, as you say, talking horse. As he is, he is Texas, the psychic horse. Um, and so that's, it, it just becomes so episodic. And it's so episodic, you just can't invest in it at all. What you it, really it, mean is that the horse isn't working for sausages. I say to you, the horse does <laughs> not work for sausages, it works for pain. <laughs> Mm. And you've already said how disappointed you are with with Spielberg, has sort of in a way yes. it's not exactly sold out because he's always gone for mass market, but it's just too sentimental for your taste. No, I love sentimental. You know, yes. I just I don't know I don't know what it is. It's maybe you just hit a certain point in your career. Jimmy Loud, incredibly close. And actually, last week our panel just completely slated that film, all of them. I'm probably in a minority. I actually loved this film. I, I really did. I think this is. Uh, I mean, I, 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 I just don't think people get this film. They, 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 because of 9-11, but actually 9-11 is not really what it's about. It's about this little boy's journey. It's about a little boy trying to make sense of something. And the little boy is, suffers from Asperger's, and he's annoying, but he's supposed to be annoying, and then he becomes extremely moving. I think it's a wonderful film. I think Stephen Daldry is a fantastically good director. And I suppose the idea of 9-11 is something that might appeal to the Academy, something that's a dramatic real life event. Yeah, I suppose so, but they have to have a longer wick than I do. I just couldn't stand it. I couldn't stand him. He was so annoying with his yeah, little that's, tambourine. That really, um, this is what really so annoys me. I'm sorry. This is what really annoys me about, about the attitude towards this little boy. I mean, there, there are kids like this, and they are like this, who have this obsession uh, Asperger's kids. But then it should have the courage to say that. But, but it, he, does, it, does but it doesn't. Say, he turns around it and says, I was tested for Asperger's no, and it wasn't definitive. No, that's no, what no, he but says. That's what it, but it's, but it, but it it's very clearly about that. It's very clearly about that. Very clearly about that. Well, then that. they should man up and say something. No, it's not. Because that would be that would be saying, oh, we want you to bear this in mind in order to like the film. Well, then why bring you, it up? If you because I think the audience have to do the work. And I think that's one of the problems. I you're going to agree to disagree. But another film based on, you know, a very different difficult time in America's history is The Help, very successful best-selling book. Mm -hmm. We've talked about Viola Davis's performance, but overall, best picture? I wouldn't say best picture, no. No, I wouldn't. I think, I think they're really strong performances. I think, I think Brian's right. I think there's a pace problem with this. Um, uh, I know, I've read the book, actually. I don't usually like to compare the two, but it's, it was, it's an important book, and, and I think it's an important film, and I think it's an important film primarily, I mean, for me as, as a critic, to see wonderful actresses and, and actors that don't generally get that kind of format. So more about performances than the film itself, you think? To be honest, uh, I was drunk when I watched it. It was like, I was on a night out, came in and fell asleep halfway through, so I don't feel I can really comment. I have to be honest. <laughs> Nobody ever is on these panels, but I, I nodded <laughs> off. <laughs> That's not a good sign, even if you're drunk, the fact that you nod, n nodded off. Natalie, what did you make of that? Yeah, I, I think it's, it, it is a problem with it. It's very slow-paced, and it's, it's sort of charming and likeable, and everyone in it is brave and nice or properly villainous, and the lines are very clearly drawn. And it's fine, but it's actually a kind of, it's a little simplistic. There was a very good set of um, fake Oscar posters 
built and shown on Facebook over the last few weeks. Um, and the um, spoof caption they gave this was, white people solve racism, you're welcome black people. <laughs> and that sums up this film too meanly and accurately, I'm afraid. <laughs> if only they really did have posters like that. <laughs> that's that's our predictions and we take no responsibility for any losses you may incur at the bookies on Sunday. Now when the red carpet's rolled up and the frocks are back in the shops, what difference does an Oscar actually make? Still viewed as the summit of movie-making success, it seems that the results of winning are, well, pretty variable, actually. So my Oscar isn't always a game. <laughs> there's, there's a reason why. I mean, I probably shouldn't be speaking ahead of, of Brian, but, uh, but it's because a lot of these films, you know, they're not making a lot of money with these films that they're getting uh, nominated with. And, and if you win, it's time to actually pay your mortgage and put your th kids through school. You know, they, uh, you know, we think that stars make all this money. They don't always. Does it they make? don't. That's yeah. true. They don't always. I, I think the Oscars has become a very cynical exercise, quite frankly. I think the whole thing is it's they, they kind of squeeze all these films through a tube that comes up usually between Christmas and January, and they try to get all the films out there. And so a lot of films fall by the way. A lot of films don't manifest. You know, you don't see them, especially with the screeners. And I get loads of screeners at this time. And I think it's not what it used to be, which used to be the work over a period of a year, work that you look at. And of course, the artist is actually part of, ironically, is part of that over the year, because as you said, it was showed in Illinois way, way back. It does mean that you earn more money as an actor. It certainly does that. But, this, but the studio system is forcing, forcing it. But we still love them, don't we? Yeah, we do. I mean, it focuses everyone's attention on film and on a particular kind of film for a certain period of the year. For the rest of the year, certainly as critics, you go, oh, okay, it's art festival's time, it's, it's Cannes, or it's Berlin, or it's Venice, or it's London. I think for best actor and actress? Uh, I think best actor will go to Jean Dujardin, and I would like it to go to Jean Dujardin with a tiny bit of Brad Pitt in the quiet. <laughs> I think it, the best actress will go to Meryl Streep. I would like it to go to... Oh God, they're all terrible films. I would like, <laughs> I would like women to get better films next year as an alternative to somebody give it, being given okay. best actress and okay. best director mm, as an officious, I think. Uh, I think it's going to be the artist all the way, uh, with Jean Dujardin and the artist. Meryl, obviously, though I think Rooney Mara gave an astonishingly extraordinary performance in The Girl with the Dragon Tattoo. No. I'd say exactly the same thing. I think the artist will sweep the boards, but you know, I think Meryl Streep's unbeatable in, in terms of a Thatcher biopic. Who, who can stand against her? And, and who would you like to win? Oh, I, I would like, I think Streep yeah. deserves it. You know, yeah. she, was, she was great. I know it's so obvious in Meryl Streep, but, but it's true, she's, she's great. Karen? She can be beaten, <laughs> and that's by Viola Davis. She, she, will, she will beat it, and, and I think it is going to be a sweep with the artist. For every other category, yeah, well, think, for, I, 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 for the main major categories anyway. So, yeah. so Jean Dujardin, do you think? For yes, the best I, I think that's right because um, it's too novel and too delightful, and people are too excited about it for, for it not to happen. And it's never happening again. I think that's right. This is the one time to have right. funny Oscars. It's the yep. first yeah. silent movie to be up for best yeah. picture to since, 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 since Wings. 1929, yeah. Yeah. Uh, since the first year. I hope it doesn't usher in a new age of silent films. <laughs> 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 that's the thing it does work. Yeah, you'll ruin the It wouldn't be. That'd be great. It's easier for you. Okay. Like, uh, exactly. No lines, OK. Well, we'll hope you get sent one of those scripts. Oh, Thank you very please, much indeed. Well, so that's <laughs> us finished <laughs> with a... Now be silent. Now be silent. Finished with Oscar for another year. You can see whether our panel got it gloriously right or royally wrong on the live Academy Awards broadcast on Sky Movies in the middle of Sunday night. Thanks to my now goggle-eyed panel, Brian Cox and Natalie Haynes, Mark Miller and Karen Krasanovich. Remember, you can find out more about tonight's show and what's coming up soon on our website.